Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. We're going to begin a playlist over the digestive system. And the way we're going to do this playlist is in each video we're going to look at a different part of the digestive system. And so we're just going to work our way from the mouth all the way through the GI tract. We'll talk about various accessory organs on the way, like the liver, the gallbladder, and pancreas, and then we'll eventually follow the flow of the food, or what's left of it, I should say, out the anus. And so we'll just put those videos in order in the playlist. And so in this video, we're going to start out by looking at the oral cavity and a little bit of the pharynx. Okay, I think we all generally have an idea what the oral cavity is. So the oral cavity is really just the space here inside the mouth. But the mouth has a lot of important functions in digestion. First of all, now this one's more obvious, it's of course the entry point for food. You have to get food somehow into your body. It, of course, enters through the mouth. However, the mouth plays an important role in the initial digestion of food, Okay, the initial breakdown of food, both chemical and mechanical. Now, I would argue that mechanical is probably the much bigger thing here because, as we'll see in a little bit, there's no fat digestion in the mouth and there's no protein digestion. There is a little bit of carbohydrate digestion, um, but... Mechanical digestion is going to take precedence here in the mouth, and it's extremely important. We'll come back in a little bit and talk about these enzymes here. We'll see that only one of them is actually active inside the mouth. But with the mouth, we actually have accessory organs. Probably didn't think about this, but these are extremely important for different reasons. One, we have the teeth. I think we know the teeth chew. Okay? The teeth promote what's called mechanical digestion. But really, let's think about what the teeth are doing. When you chew food, you're breaking that food apart. If you were to just swallow that food whole, that's going to create a problem. And let's think about what that problem is. Okay? What do teeth do by breaking the food apart? They increase the surface area. If we think about anywhere in the digestive system, anywhere, stomach, small intestine, if I expect to have adequate digestion of that food, I need the enzymes that are going to be secreted from these various organs to have adequate access to the molecules. Okay? But if I don't chew my food, if I just swallow it whole, as sometimes you see dogs do this, then there's not adequate surface area for the enzymes to get to all the little bitty molecules, the millions and millions and millions of molecules. So the function of the teeth in chewing is to break the food apart before you swallow it. So when that food gets to the stomach, it has an increased surface area available for enzyme binding. Okay. We don't normally think about this, but these are extremely important for increasing that surface area. This is why they often tell you to chew your food significantly for, a, I don't know if there's a certain amount of time, we normally don't think about that, but chewing your food allows for those uh, products to be broken apart more and more and more. And so when you swallow, when they get into the stomach, there's more surface area available for a digestion. Okay. But the teeth are going to be involved in purely mechanical digestion. Okay. The tongue is also important. Okay. Um, it has some degree of mechanical digestion. You can actually move things around in your, uh, in your mouth with your tongue. That can mix it with saliva. Um, it can actually, in some cases, break it down. Not as important as the teeth are in breaking it down, but the tongue plays some role in mechanical digestion. What the tongue also does is it has sensory receptors which are called gustatory receptors. Gustation is actually the scientific term for taste, or at least the sensation. Um, taste is extremely important because if we weren't able to taste anything, what would be our motivation for eating other than just sustaining life? We ought to get some joy out of eating, right? So the sensation is extremely important. Um, when people get older, so elderly people, a geriatric population, a lot of them have lost a lot of that sensation. And so when you look at certain populations like elderly people that don't really enjoy eating as much anymore, there's a reason. It's because they've lost a lot of those gustatory receptors and they don't have as much taste sensation. So the tongue plays an important role in getting us to eat in the first place. What's the point of eating? if you can't get any fun out of it or joy. okay, So that's actually important. 
But one of the most important things here are the salivary glands. And we have two types of salivary glands. We have intrinsic salivary glands and we have extrinsic salivary glands. The intrinsic ones we won't actually see on a model because the intrinsic ones are simply located in the mucosal lining of the oral cavity. So the mucosal lining is actually just the, the layer of cells that directly opens to the cavity. Okay? Um, so if we look at this, the cells that actually line this, those are the mucosal cells. And some of them will actually secrete substances into the oral cavity. Those cells that do that are called intrinsic salivary glands. And the secretion of these intrinsic salivary glands is basically saliva. Okay? And this saliva has several important functions. Uh, one, the saliva secretes antibodies like IgA. IgA is a type of antibody and it will basically bind to any foreign material such as bacteria um, and basically tag it for destruction by the immune system. We want to prevent as much harmful pathogens from getting into our body as possible, but since we're eating, that's a really good opportunity for bacteria to get into the body, right? So IgA secreted by these glands will actually bind to those bacteria and basically tag them for destruction, okay? Um, there's also lysozyme. That's an enzyme that will actually destroy bacteria, so lysozyme is also very important. These cells also secrete mucus. The mucus kind of mixes with the food um, and actually lubricates it, which actually makes it easier to swallow when we eventually do that. If you didn't secrete any mucus, you've had a very dry mouth, it's going to be harder to swallow that, that food. Okay, so the mucus that's secreted by these uh, intrinsic salivary glands is going to lubricate the food. But there's one more important piece that's done through the intrinsic salivary glands, and that's this enzyme called lingual lipase. We'll look at its reaction in a few minutes. Um, it suffices to say for now that it catalyzes the breakdown of triglycerides into fatty acids. Now, what's important to understand about lingual lipase is it's not active in the oral cavity. Okay. It's secreted by these cells, these intrinsic salivary glands. However, lingual lipase does not actually become active until we get to the stomach. Okay. That's because lingual lipase is activated by low pH. The pH inside the oral cavity is not low enough to elicit activity of lingual lipase. So you have to first swallow, and then it goes down the pharynx, through the esophagus, and eventually into the stomach, and that's where lingual lipase becomes active. Okay? I'll mention it in, on the next slide as well. Then we have extrinsic salivary glands. These we can actually locate um, on a model. We actually have three of them. We have the sublingual gland, which lies underneath the tongue. Then we have the submandibular gland, which is the most inferior of all of these. It actually lies underneath the mandible, thus the name submandibular. And then we have the parotid glands. Each one that is the left and right lies directly posterior to the corresponding masseter muscle. Okay? Now, each one of these extrinsic salivary glands is going to release a watery substance, but in particular the parotid gland plays an important role because it releases this enzyme, salivary amylase. Um, sometimes you'll hear this referred to as tylen. That's an alternate name for this enzyme. Now, in contrast to lingual lipase, salivary amylase is active in the oral cavity. Okay? And what salivary amylase does is it catalyzes the breakdown of starch to glucose and oligosaccharides. Now, let's actually look at that reaction. It's the second one down here. So here's salivary amylase. So we have a starch polymer. Starch is a polymer of glucoses. So we have multiple glucoses linked together, and there's a lot more than this, as indicated by the arrows going in either direction. There's thousands of glucoses bound together like this. And what salivary amylase does is it basically just cleaves off glucose units one at a time. Okay, to leave us with uh, a slightly smaller starch polymer and then glucose. And the nice thing about this is that uh, the glucose can actually be absorbed into the blood. So we don't get a whole lot of absorption in the mouth, there's only a little bit, but it turns out that the tongue can actually absorb some of that glucose. Okay? So the tongue can not only sense 
that glucose. It can sense that sweet taste, but it can also absorb a little bit of that glucose. And again, out of these two enzymes, only the salivary amylase, also called tylen, is active in the oral cavity. With lingual lipase, we're going to have to wait until we're in the stomach before this enzyme actually becomes active. Okay? Now, inside the oral cavity, we've got the teeth chewing, also called mastication. I should mention that. That's the term for chewing, mastication. Teeth chewing the food increasing the surface area. We've got the intrinsic salivary glands releasing saliva that lubricates the food, helps mix it up a little bit more. We've got the tongue that's tasting anything that uh, is sweet. Okay, A little bit of absorption of glucose as well from starch digestion. We've got the extrinsic salivary glands that are releasing salivary amylase, so we're getting a little bit of starch digestion. And we're basically producing this bolus of food. So when we mix all that stuff together, it becomes what we call a bolus, okay? And that bolus of food is going to have to be swallowed, okay? So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to briefly talk about the pharynx, and then we're going to save the esophagus for the following video because it, it's kind of a thing all to itself. But in order to swallow the food, we have to move that food from the oral cavity, which is right here, into the pharynx, and then it'll move down to the esophagus. Okay? Now the pharynx is really just a passageway. There is no digestion in the pharynx. There is no absorption in the pharynx. It is just a passageway. That is a key, just a passageway. And the pharynx has three parts. There's a part up here which we're not going to consider because under normal circumstances we don't get food going up into the nose. Sometimes if you're laughing you can get fluid up there, but we're not going to consider the nasopharynx. That's the part uh, posterior to the nasal cavity. But this part we will consider. This is the oropharynx. The oropharynx is the region of the pharynx that is directly posterior to the oral cavity. Okay? very small region right here, and then inferior to the oropharynx we have the laryngopharynx, which is the portion of the pharynx that is in the larynx region. Now what's important to understand about the laryngopharynx is it leads into two separate passageways. Okay, So we can see here it leads into the anterior respiratory tract and the posterior digestive tract Directly, it will be the esophagus. Okay? We obviously do not want food going into the respiratory tract, because if it did, that's going to cause us to choke. We only want that food going into the digestive tract or the esophagus directly. Okay? So we're going to see something when we look at the esophagus video that there's going to be this structure right here that will actually cover the opening to the respiratory tract. It's called the epiglottis, but that's in the laryngopharynx. But with the pharynx in general, there is absolutely no digestion, there is no absorption, it's simply a passageway from the oral cavity into the esophagus. But you do need to know for lab the various parts of the pharynx, be able to identify those. Okay. So let's do a quick recap here of the oral cavity. Okay. We've got the mouth as a whole. We, of course, have three accessory organs, the teeth, the tongue, and the salivary glands, both intrinsic and extrinsic. And we're going to have both mechanical and chemical digestion. The chemical digestion is more minor. It really just consists of the salivary amylase. But the mechanical digestion is much bigger here in the mouth. We have the teeth, which, of course, are going to chew on the food, break it up, increase its surface area for enzyme access later in the digestive tract, although it will be also important for access by salivary amylase. Okay? But later on it's going to be much more important, particularly in the stomach, that we have that increased surface area. So chew your food, guys. And once we break down that food, we mix it with the saliva and all that stuff, and it becomes this nasty mess, that is called a bolus. And we're going to swallow that bolus, it's, of course, going to go through the oropharynx, the laryngopharynx, down the esophagus, which we'll cover in the next video, and then eventually into the stomach, right? What's important to understand is, by when we reach the stomach, the only thing we will have digested is starch, and not even completely. We only partially digest the starch in the mouth. Fats are not digested yet. Proteins, not digested yet, okay? So when we get to the stomach, 
we're going to see that we've got completely intact proteins, completely intact lipids. Some of our starch has been degraded, but mostly we haven't digested anything. We've just broken it apart mechanically and increased its surface area. We're going to really start seeing digestion when we hit the stomach because that's when we'll actually have activity of lingual lipase and we'll introduce a few new enzymes here in the stomach and then we're really going to see digestion in the small intestine. That's really where we see most digestion, chemically speaking. All right, But hopefully the oral cavity makes sense to you. In the next video, we're going to pick up with the esophagus, and then after that, we'll start the stomach. So please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.